Hello and welcome to today's workshop, Your Ultimate Business Success System. I'm Hannah Ashcroft, I'm the founder of Female on Fire, and it's my mission to help women from all over the world to build wildly successful businesses. So if you are here to learn the exact things that you need to be doing to explode your business, then you are in the right place. In the next 45 to 60 minutes, you are gonna learn my strategy on how to grow your business to six figures and beyond. Welcome to Your Ultimate Success System. You know, I'm excited to share the success system with you. So let's see how much we can cover in our time together. This is how to explode your business, how to get more clients and how to make more money without overwhelm, fear or burnout. If you stay until the end of this workshop and you will get my step-by-step -step launch blueprints so that you can deliver five finger la figure launches on repeat. And I've also got two other special bonuses, but you have to hang around to find out about those. Now, this is going to be action packed and full of valuable content. So I hope you've come prepared, ready to minimize distractions and ready to focus. This is high level stuff, guys. If you can understand what I'm about to explain to you, then it will enable you to elevate your business to whatever level of success you desire. So you're probably wondering why I'm qualified to teach you on this topic. And don't worry, I'm not about to launch into a 30 minute spiel about how amazing I am. I will leave you to make up your mind on that one. For those of you that already know me, then you'll know I'm an all action, no fluff kind of girl. So luckily for you, that means this is going to be direct and straight to the point. I've worn many hats in my 18 years of experience, from selling washing powder to financial analyst to salesperson, to leading investment bank, to business solutions and to business strategy. It actually makes a really great story. I started off selling washing powder. And this was such an amazing learning ground for selling. I used to work with some fat middle-aged men who'd sweat away. They would sweat, not me. And I would, you know, travel with them and I would learn every sleazy sales tactic that they had. And I learned every single trick in the book. And then I became a financial an analyst. So apart from the long hours, you know, I was working from 6 a.m. to like 8 p.m. if I was lucky. Then it really helped me to understand every minute detail of business of all sizes from up to multi-billion dollar organizations. This was CEO, CFO level type stuff. I literally had the direct number for the CEOs and CFOs offices of some of the largest organizations in the world, such as Shell and BP. And these people would call me and my team to get our thoughts on industry trends and opportunities. So you can call me sad, but understanding a business is what makes me tick. But I'm a self-confessed workaholic. I've always been fascinated with how businesses work, what makes some businesses excel while others struggle to get traction and results. Now, the next stage of my life was exactly like the big short for anyone who's seen that film. So if you haven't seen it, go and see it because that was my life back then. Where there were billions of dollars of products being sold every week and speed and sharpness were the name of the game. Then came the great financial crisis where everyone was losing their heads, their jobs and their money. I had clients crying down the phone. I had desperate calls to try and save various financial institutions. And my team were one of the few not to lose our jobs because we took action and we morphed ourselves into a business strategy and solution provider to survive. But we also thrived in this role. We raised billions of dollars of funding for banks at a critical time. Now, I've put on there as a bit of a joke, I'm an ex-investment banker because I know investment bankers can get a bad rap and there's a lot of people that don't like investment bankers, but I am straight down the line and I'm trustworthy. Um, so that's just a little bit of a joke, just in case you don't like investment bankers. Now, here's a few random facts about me. You know, I once danced on a table which led to a $10 million sale. That was back in the old days, back in the crazy, crazy days. And it's true. And I will save that story for another time, but that's a true thing. And then in the picture here, you'll see two of my kids. The, um, the third one didn't quite make it into the shop, but I'm a mum of three young children and they are my daily motivation. I want my children to grow up in a world where they know and believe that they can achieve anything they set their mind to. So they are my driving force for everything that I do. And as I've already said, I'm a bit of a workaholic, but when I'm not working, then you can usually find me glued to Netflix or binge eating chocolate. That's my, uh, my guilty pleasure. So Hannah Ashcroft, this is why I know what I'm talking about. I have sold tens of billions of dollars of products. There are very few people better positioned to teach you about business strategy and sales. And I'm going to do just that. That's why all this is important because I'm not just a wannabe and you see so many of them out there, particularly online. People saying, look at me, look how much money I've made and lots of them just making it up. But I walk the walk, I talk the talk and I've got the notches on my belt to prove it. 
I know what makes businesses function. I know how to build businesses. Some of the businesses I've mentioned earlier have turned into six, seven, or even eight figure businesses. I know what accelerates growth and I know how to sell. And that combined is a lethal combination. But even with top class experience under my belt, it hasn't and wasn't all plain sailing. So when I first started out my business, whilst I did a lot of things right, I also made a bunch of mistakes. And this is what I figured out. I figured out it's easy and normal to get overwhelmed. And I still have moments today where I feel overwhelmed. And I also suffered from shiny object syndrome. I always say, if there's a shiny on objects anonymous, I would be there and I'd be raising my hand saying, my name's Hannah and I'm a shiny object addict. But there is an easy fix for that. I also figured out the foolproof method for having consistent sales in your business. I figured out how to maximize your revenue opportunity for each person in your audience. And I also learned that skipping essential steps early on in your business takes up valuable time and energy to correct later on and can lose you a lot of ground. So it's much better to get your foundations in place early on. And by understanding the importance of solid foundations, you can use it as a springboard for success so you can grow and scale your business. Now, I learned the hard way, and this is what I want for you. I want you to benefit from the tens of thousands of dollars and countless months I've spent figuring out what I'm going to talk you through now. I honestly expected it to be easy and very quickly reality hit. I way underestimated the steepness of the learning curve, the huge amount of overwhelm that would be omnipresent, and the feelings of self-doubt and fear that would creep in throughout the day. We all have it. It's normal, but it's how we deal with things that is important. When I first started out, I was like a kid in a sweet shop. I was hoarding freebies like they were going out of fashion. I still have a whole folder in my inbox for freebies. It's probably got something like 10,000 messages in. And I was thinking, I've got to have that. If I don't do that, my business is not going to be successful. I was also diligent in listening to and following the gurus. After all, they're the pioneers whose success we all aspire to. But the harder I pushed, the more overwhelmed I felt, the more tired I became, and the further away my goals seemed. So yes, I started making a few sales early on, but it wasn't consistent income. And my entire approach was very haphazard and definitely not scalable. And it was only when I hired my first coach, took a step back and did a, re a really full review of my business before building it back up with a solid foundation that things really started to take off. And it positioned my business for rapid and easy growth to whatever level of success I desire. Now, just a couple of things I want to mention. And the first one is, you are the key to your success. You need to go for it and you need to chase those dreams. I truly believe that anyone can build a wildly successful business. I really do. And that is my mission. That is why I want to inspire and motivate you to be the best that you can be and to reach those levels of income that you want to reach. Action is everything. Most people watching this will not do a single thing as a result of watching this. And I don't want that for you. So even if there's just one thing, I want you to take it away and put it into action, please. Knowledge on its own means nothing at all. You need to decide if you want to achieve anything, and I think you can achieve anything. You need to decide on what you want, and you need to take the action to make it happen. So do you want to know the easy way to grow your business? Do you want to know the easy way to grow a business that does not require you working crazy hours, that does not require you feeling overwhelmed? Imagine doing that in a few months from now. Imagine consistently hitting those 10K or higher months. What would that feel like? What would it feel like to be able to take a holiday and not have to be glued to your phone the whole time? You know, when you can relax. What would it feel like to be making twice as much money as you are now and knowing that you've got income coming in consistently into your business? On this workshop, I told you I'm going to show you how to explode your business, get more clients and make more money without drowning in overwhelm, letting fear hold you back, or working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that is so exciting. So now I'm going to tell you the three big secrets that I'm going to show you on this workshop. Secret number one, I can get consistent sales every month in my business. Secret number two, I can tap into the power of Facebook to get more clients. And secret number three, I don't need to feel overwhelmed, fear, or burnout to get rapid growth. But first, I need to explain to you how this fits into the ultimate business success system and the fundamentals behind it so you can understand the way in which it works and how your business fits into the model. There's a lot of science and research behind this system, which I'm not going to go into in much detail today because otherwise we'd be here for hours and hours. And it's my geek topic, so you probably don't want to get me started on that. So for a high level overview, let's jump right in. 
Have you ever asked yourself the following questions? What should I be doing? What am I, should I be focusing on? And the truth is you need to be focused on the right thing for your business at the specific stage of you are at with your business. And this is one of the biggest challenges that we as business owners have, whatever stage we're at. And when you're first starting out, when you're in the early stages, you don't have your filters in place, which means it's particularly challenging because you're bombarded daily and from every direction with all the things that you have to be doing. And it can be completely overwhelming. So how do you know what the right things are for you at this point in your business? The reality is that most businesses follow a similar pattern. So sure, you're unique, your journey is unique, so there will be variations in how you get to the destination. Some businesses will have a bumpier ride, as you see on this chart, more peaks and troughs, but nevertheless, all businesses, if they are to succeed, will go through each of these phases. There'll be the ignition phase. This is action and idea validation. You'll move on to the growth stage, stage where your sales are increasing and you're getting your lead generation methodology sorted out. Then you go into scale where you're investing in your proven model for rapid growth. And finally, you're an innovation where you're trying to stay ahead of the game. And once you can begin to understand that, then you can begin to determine what it is you need to be doing to take your business to the next level. And it takes off a whole layer of overwhelm, fear and uncertainty that others without this knowledge and the ability to apply the right strategies will continue to go through. You cannot run before you can walk. And that is why this system is so effective, because all the building blocks get put in place in the right order. So moving on to secret one, I can get consistent sales every month in my business. The number one thing I hear people struggling with is getting more clients. If I said, who wants more clients? I would put my hand up. Yes, please, I'd love more clients. I mean, who doesn't want more clients? But what most people don't fully grasp is the fact that they're not struggling to find the clients. They're struggling to connect, to engage, and to sell to their target audience. Your business depends on your ability to do this. It is the single most important thing that you can get good at. But you cannot start with selling. It just doesn't work. I did some lives on the Female on Fire Facebook group um, last week when I gave the analogy of dating. You wouldn't just walk up to someone and say, will you marry me? So what makes you think that the way to get more clients is to show up in front of people's faces by saying, buy my product or service? Just imagine walking down the street and someone came up to you and said, hey, buy this amazing product. What do you think your answer would be? First of all, you'd think, who is this weirdo? And secondly, you'd say, on your bike. You just wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it in the real world, so why do you think it's okay to do it online? Of course you wouldn't do it. You've missed a whole load of steps. You know, back to the dating analogy. Your eyes meet across a bar. You know, an approach is made. Light conversation is made while you scope each other out and find out if you have a connection, if you have things in common. Then you start to build a relationship and get to know each other. Then you start to go steady. Then you get married. Then you live happily ever after. So in a business sense, this is your process for getting clients. You need to connect. Connect is how you generate your leads, how you fill your funnels, how you grow your communities, and most importantly, how you automate that process. Engage is how you take your audience from a point of first contact to warmed up and ready to whip out their credit card for your amazing product or service. And selling. Selling is the easy transition. Note that I say easy, if you've done the first two things right, into a sale. But it's also knowing how to move your prospects along the value chain so that you aren't leaving money on the table. So you don't just stop at offering everyone your $10 product. You have a range across the board because somebody that buys your $10 product might be equally as happy buying a $1,000 product from you or even higher. Now you can just randomly do things. You can comment on a few posts on Facebook. You can try and entice someone over to your group or onto your list. You can throw a few blog posts up onto your website. But you'd quickly find that this approach achieves sporadic results and it's very time intensive on your part. And that's the beauty of the internet. You now have a platform via which you can reach countless people. Just imagine in the old days when you had to do sales over the telephone, scouring the phone book for numbers to call or door to door. Well, now you can quickly build a leveraged model that makes it possible to generate very high revenues in a very short period of time. And that's why you hear so many people talking about how much money they're making. A lot of them are telling a pack of lies, to be honest. But the reason people talk about it is it is possible to do it in a very short period of time. Take this workshop, for example. I can reach hundreds of people at the same time, and then I can turn this into an evergreen workshop that can make me money to perpetuity. But this is reality. Let's do a reality check. 
Your profitability is directly correlated to your list size and the responsiveness of that list. If your list is small or not responsive, then you will find it difficult. Did you know that the industry standard conversion rates are one to 2%? That means if you want to make 10 sales, you need a thousand people on your list. Did I mention how important your list is yet? Now, sure, you can do things that will move these numbers, you can play around with sales pages, you can offer more bonuses, but generally they will revert to these sort of levels. And I've checked this against some of the, um, some of the leading experts that I know in the, in the industry. So how many sales you make is therefore a function of your list size and your marketing method. So let's say for a moment that you and I were both equally adept at marketing. If you had a larger list than me, who would get better results? You would, of course. A bigger list will get you better results, all other things being equal. I've also put on there, it has a multiplier effect. So what do I mean about that? Well, if you have a large list, and I'm almost guaranteed that you would have seen this happen, then you can get results really quickly just by sending out a message or posting a question. So you would have seen this. Someone puts, oh, I'm thinking of putting together a masterclass on how to do 50 handstands in a row. Any interest? And the next thing they know, they've got, you know, 80 people signed up or I've got 10 slots, one-on-one -on -one slots opened up for, for, for 30 minutes, you know, session with me, message me, and bang, they're all gone within minutes. That's what I mean by the multiplier effect. And then finally, collaboration. Collaborations are more likely when you have a larger list because would you rather get your list out, to, your message out to a larger or a smaller audience? Now, it doesn't mean you can't get results from a small list. I've got clients that have made thousands from lists of just a few hundred people. And I got my first client before I even had 10 people on my list. And most of those 10 were my mum, my brothers, and other people in my family or friends. So it is possible, but it's harder. What it means is you need to be focused on growing your list and working towards that happening on autopilot. So how do we do that? Source of your list. Your list is built by doing two things, driving traffic to your list and converting that traffic to paying clients. Now traffic, you can drive using either time or money. It's like a scale. If you put more time in, you spend less money. If you put more money in, you don't have to spend so much time. So you've got free marketing, you've got paid marketing, and you've got collaborations and partnerships. So free marketing, this is all about creating great content and sharing it across the web. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about leveraging the power of Facebook. The downside to this though is it's slow, but there are tricks or hacks to speed this up, which I share with my clients to great effect. But the upside is it's free, other than your time, of course. It's a very powerful strategy and done right can continue to benefit for, year, for years into the future. And it doesn't have to take up all your time. I base my strategy and my client strategy around two to four pieces of core content. These are longer, more research pieces that really establish your place as an expert in your field. You can spread your content as widely as you can reach. YouTube, Twitter, iTunes, Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinstagram, Pinstagram, Pinterest, wherever your audience hang out in numbers. And you also need to think about repurposing. So if you write your blog post, you post it to your page, you post it in your Facebook group, you email it to your list, you do a live stream or a video on it, you post that to YouTube, you tweet about it, um, you put it on Instagram. I use a great tool called Missing Letter, which takes your blog post and creates automatic social media campaigns that will run for the next 12 months. So that's something that's worth checking out. It's not connected to me in any shape or form. You need to think about SEO, search engine optimization, choosing your keywords and using them everywhere to drive your ranking in Google. And then we've got paid marketing. You know, this is how to attract people to your website. This is what, how to entice them to give up their email address, um, you know, in exchange for something, how to convert them into a client. And what you need to do here is you need to remember that paid marketing can be expensive. So what you need to do is you need to find a tried and tested strategy that works and then you start to invest in paid marketing. So if you have you know, a great freebie and an opt-in page that's highly converting, then you can start to put paid traffic towards that if you know you can then convert those people into paying clients. But this can be an incredibly fast way to grow your list. And also collaborations. You know, build relationships with people that have the audience that you want because they've already got the trust of that audience. You need to be a good people person for this. You need to identify partners in a complementary business to you. So for example, if you're a personal trainer, you might look for a dietitian or a wellness coach. You need to approach them. You need to try and identify the right people to contact to set up an introduction. And you need to service and strategize them. You provide value first, and then you suggest finding ways to work together. Now let's talk about shiny, bright objects. So at the same time, I advise you not to get distracted by shiny object syndrome. There's no better way to attract your target audience than by creating a shiny object of your own. 
If we link this back to the business success system, and the idea here is all about creating validation so that you can scale. Remember the stages of business growth to scale. Once you have a, have a freebie that has a high opt-in conversion rate and you're confident that you can convert your subscribers into paid clients, then marketing becomes viable and recommended. So if, for example, you knew that by subscribing 100 people to your list, you would get one sale at $1,000, then how much are those 100 people worth to you? The answer should be anything less, less than $1,000. It's common business sense. Now, there's so much that goes into the perfect opt-in offer. There's the psychology of persuasion. There's understanding your target audience. And when you think about it from the perspective of your target audience, you need to think about it from a risk-reward perspective. Somebody has to think that the benefit of giving you their email address outweighs the risks of engaging with you. And that's why I often say to people, free calls are not always the best thing to offer. I say not always because I'm assuming it's for a cold audience here. Free calls are excellent for a warm audience. But, you know, free calls speak to someone as, as a risk of speaking with a pushy salesperson. So they're excellent for you, but they're a really hard thing to persuade people to sign up for because it's seen as a disguise for sales appointment because it's been so abused. You know, interestingly, when I offered a free getting to know you chat to my list, when I was still at a couple of hundred subscribers, I just had two people take me up on that. Whereas a week later, I offered a free training and had 10 times the number of people even though I made it super clear that I was no way interested in selling them anything because people perceived it as being more risky. Even though in actual fact, if they'd taken me up on my offer of a, of a of getting to know you chat, they would have got far more value because they would have had my one-on-one -on -one attention. I now rarely do that because I don't need to and I can't commit the time. But I, and it just goes to show that why free calls, while they're great for you, are, people are, really tend to shy away from them. So back to what a good freebie is. Good freebie could be a swipe file, it could be a checklist, it could be a cheat sheet, it could be a short guide, it could be a downloadable PDF, it could be a quiz. You know, your freebie needs to be easy to consume, talking 15 minutes or less. It needs to be focused on solving the pain point of your client. Results focused, not information focused. And it needs to be something they need, not just a nice to have. Things you need to think about. What makes them prick up their ears and take notice? How does it make them feel? Does it make them feel younger, fitter, richer? Is it believable? Do you have the authority to back it up? And is there a sense of urgency which compels them to take action immediately? Are they leaving money on the table? Are they risking taking longer to lose weight? Are they damaging their health? An amazing shiny object though is nothing if you don't have a powerful and persuasive opt-in page. Remember that your opt-in page is usually your first point of contact with a potential client, so can therefore set the tone for the rest of your relationship. It gives your prospective client a taste of what it would be like to work with you. So it's super important. It needs to be clear and simple with no distractions. It needs to have a prominent call to action and just one call to action. And that's why lead pages and click funnels are so popular because they have highly converting opt-in pages. It needs to have minimum input fields, just first name and email, unless you have a very specific reason to do otherwise. Don't ask for someone's phone number. Don't ask for someone's shoe size. You know, it's, if I see anyone asking for a phone number, but I'm off that page like a shot, I'm not going to be signing up for things where I have to give that much personal information away. And the other thing I do is where I doubt if someone has got the true authority and I'm signing up for their freebie, I sort of little, <laughs> it's my little joke, I always put in a silly name like I talk crap. So when they send me an email, they will say, they'll start off by saying, oh, so I just wanted to tell you I talk crap. <laughs> And it makes me laugh because uh, I do silly things like that. But anyway, so <laughs> your, your opt-in page, it needs to promote benefits. It needs to not features. And don't give everything away at once. Leave them wanting more and needing you to fill the gaps. So give them part of the solution. And don't try and be all things to all people. You need to be very, very specific about who you are targeting and how you're going to target them. So my current opt-in has a conversion rate of close to 70%. It was above 70, it's slipped in the last couple of weeks. And that is huge because industry averages are around 20 to 50%. So if I had a thousand people visit my opt-in page, I would get almost 700 of them joining my list, whereas the average person would have anywhere between 200 and 500. And that's a huge difference. So let's say someone at the bottom end of the range, that's just 200 people versus 700 that I would get. So let's say I have a product that costs a thousand dollars that I promote to my list. If I use the industry average conversion of 1%, I would make $7,000 from my list, whereas someone who didn't have a high converting opt-in page would only make $2,000. So that's around three times as much. So you can just do the maths and work out why it's so important to have a high converting opt-in page. 
And that's why validation is such a key component of the ultimate business success system at every stage. You need to take the action, you need to look at the reaction, and you need to validate. Secret number two, I can tap into the power of Facebook to get more clients. I'm going to jump ahead a bit before I come back and complete the engage and sell part of the consistent sales formula. Most people seem to use Facebook as their primary way to connect and engage with their audience. And it's not surprising, Facebook has over 2 billion users and there are 1 billion users of Facebook groups. There are also 600 million users of Instagram. There are 340 million users of Twitter. There are 150 million users of, of Pinterest. So your target audience are there somewhere. So when someone says to me, I can't find clients, I know that one of two things is happening. Firstly, they aren't being specific enough about who their ideal client is or they don't know where they hang out. Or secondly, they know where they hang out, but they don't know how to start connecting with them and growing that know, like, and trust factor. You know, Facebook is huge for my business. My group, my lead generation, it all comes from Facebook. And I know I can use Facebook to drive a steady stream of clients to my list and my group and to generate an income. And that gives me control and a stable base from which I can sell. Too many people miss the crucial piece of this puzzle. The importance of control. You need to control your people somewhere, either in a group or on a list, so that you can sell to them directly. Connecting. You need to be super clear on your who, where and how. It's commonly known that people with similar interests or passions will tend to gather together and we're drawn to people that are just like us. If you went to a party, you would most likely seek out people that are similar to you because it's safe ground. So make sure you have drilled down into who your target audience is. And it's easier today than ever to search for people by being ultra specific. What websites have they visited? What TV series have they watched? Do they have kids? What age are their kids? What are their political views? Be ultra specific. What are their pains, passions, desires, hobbies? And there's a reason for being ultra specific. The more specific your search is, the cheaper it can be to acquire clients because you can find them in less obvious places. And it also means you can be ultra targeted with your marketing. I'm sure you've seen people doing segmentation. I do it when people join my list and my Facebook group. I ask a series of questions or I ask one question so that I can get more information about them so I can be more targeted with what I'm sending them and what funnels I put people into. You know, the more specific you can be, the easier it is to get people's attention. Where do people hang out? What Facebook groups do they spend their time on if they're on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? What blogs do they read? What do they search for in Google? What books do they buy? What podcasts do they listen to? It starts by knowing where your customers are. Otherwise, none of this matters. There are so many ways to find your ideal client. But you don't need to find all the ways. You just need to find a few ways that work for you and that feel right. And you can grow a six or seven-figure business just by mastering these. How? How can you interrupt their attention and divert it to you? You know, shout down there and shout, woohoo, I'm over here. You need to try and engage with a person that has an attention span shorter than a goldfish. That's what scientists have shown. Humans have attention spans shorter than goldfish now. So you need catchy pictures, you need compelling headlines. Most people do not go onto Facebook to buy. So you don't want to be in their face selling. You need to add value first and sell later. And it links back to secret one. I can get consistent sales in my business. I just want to do a quick aside. I want to take a moment to think about the things that Facebook loves. Facebook loves groups. It loves videos. It loves Facebook lives. And it loves things that keep people on Facebook. So when you're working on a strategy, keep these things in mind and use it as much as possible because the Facebook algorithms will be biased towards the things that Facebook likes. So if you're focused on growing your reach organically, you need to pay attention to this and you need to be doing more of the things that Facebook loves. If Facebook says jump, we say how high because there is no point here in trying to go against the grain. It's too big a beast. And with my clients, we work out the best strategy and the exact strategy that will give them maximum bang for their bucks and where their time is spent best. Remember, it's about action, reaction, validation. Action and consistency leads to results. So if we link back to getting our clients consistently and our connect, engage and sell process, we've talked about ways in which you connect with your ideal client paid free to collaborations. We've now talked about how to find your ideal client. And now let's talk about engagement. First, let's talk about posting on Facebook. You know, common things I hear from people about posting on Facebook is, I'm sharing but not getting any comments on my post. Oh, it takes me forever to write content. I don't think I'm interesting enough or I'm struggling to get people to sign up for my free offers. This is so common. It's the feeling of not being good enough or that you're wasting your time. I'm all about getting maximum results in the shortest time possible. 
Now, I don't want you to sit here thinking, well, it's easy for her to say because X, Y, or Z. The truth is that anyone can do this. You just need to take the right action and you need to be consistent. And you decide to commit to doing the work until it happens. People are bombarded with thousands of marketing messages a day. There are constantly things competing for our time and attention. And people would always say they are short of time and money. So let's talk briefly about our mindset around engaging. Nobody wants to hear my story. That's not true. My results aren't big enough to share. That's not true. Facebook book groups are too overcrowded to get noticed. That's not true. You can get engagement in groups. You can get people interested in what you, in what you, who you are and what you have to offer, even if the group has a no promo rule. So what makes an effective post? A results-based post. For example, I made $8,000 last, last month posting in Facebook groups, three groups, three times per day. Story posts, make it as visual as possible, draw the reader in. Quick win posts, what are your client results? Use numbers wherever possible. And purpose gap filling posts, filling in holes in their knowledge, how to's, that sort of thing. And motivational posts. You should be producing content regularly. I would tend to choose one type of content, whether you like written, video, audio, and stick to that, but repurpose it into other types. So let's talk for a moment about writing content. Before you start writing content, think about the following. What does your client need to hear next? What problems do they have? And what results do you get for them? First of all, you've got your emergency break headline. So you need to be able to stop them in their tracks. Today, people are more overwhelmed than ever before, and you are asking them to give up their most precious resource, which is their time. So it needs to be worth their while. So the highest converting topics are things like number headlines, 15 ways to look 10 years younger, or three ways to triple your email list. Now, if I'm looking to triple my, well, grow my email list, and I see something like that, I'll click on it. Yes, please, triple my email list. Hooray. You know, secondly, reader emotions. For example, something like 15 things every mum should know about raising happy children. Wow, if I'm a mum, I need to know this, so I need to click on it. I don't want the fear of missing out. It means I would click on it. You know, thirdly, how to post, how to make more money, how to eat chocolate and lose weight. Oh, yes, please, I want to know that. In fact, if anyone knows how to eat chocolate and lose weight, that would be a great one. <laughs> and fourthly, questions. So asking a question which addresses their pain point, which you know the answer, or they'll shout, yes, please, to you. Do you want to have more energy? Do you want to make a million dollars? Whatever the question is. And then finally, information, the yay without the nay, how to get more clients without spending any money, how to lose weight without cutting out your favorite foods. And then call to actions. Every single piece of content needs to have just one call to action. It could be buy, download this, share, join my group, whatever it might be. The three biggest mistakes I see are people having either too many call to actions, no call to actions, or it's too complicated. You know, if people are on your website, don't send them away from your website because that's their eyes on your business, not being distracted by other things such as Facebook. So always have a call to action, keep it simple, and never assume that someone will know what you want them to do. Finally, people won't buy from you if you don't ask them to buy. So if you're selling something, you need to send a sales email. So talking of selling, let's talk about selling a bit more. Now let's talk about the sales mindset. There are so many negative associations with selling. People see it as icky or pushy or bullying. But you do need to get comfortable selling. Selling is defined as an exchange of value. You are helping people with your product or service. So you need to be letting the world know about what you can do. So before you can make any money in your business, you need to have changed the right mindset about selling. You need to say to yourself, I make people's lives better. They need what I have. I make people's lives better. They need what I have. I make people's lives better. They need what I have. And if you've done a good job of building the connection and the engagement with your target audience, then your products or services should sell themselves. It becomes an extension of the engagement. What do you need help with? Why is that important to you? Would you like someone to help you with that? Would you like that person to be me? Now, if you don't tell someone about how they can change some element of their life, then they won't know. And never assume they know something. You can never tell them too many times. Find your own way of selling. Now, talk about sale archetypes. There isn't just one right way. It's what feels right for you. And if you are authentic, then you will sell more, period. In the Female on Fire Mastermind, we discover what type of sales best resonates with you. It's so my three sales archetype model. Are you a hustler, are you a nurturer, or a silent assassin? And the exact methods that you should be using to sell in a way that feels right for you and maximizes your sales. When I used to um, work in the bank, I sat between two guys. And the three of us 
were nearly always in the top five salespeople out of about 200. But we all had different styles. On my right, I had the hustler. And this was a guy who would start on the phone at eight o'clock in the morning and he would just go bang, 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 go through his list and call every single person and just nonstop from eight until six in the evening. And he was the hustler and he'd go through his list and he would make the sales and just consistently taking action. And then on my left, I had the silent assassin and he would try and work, go for the big sales. So he would probe and he would work the angles and he might go two weeks without a sale and then suddenly bang, 200 million of sales. So he would be the silent assassin. And then I sat in the middle. I was the nurturer. For me, it's all about relationships. I believe so passionately in building strong relationships and relationships for me are the foundation for selling and people would buy from me because they knew me, they liked me and they trusted me. Next thing I want to mention is objection handling. When I was selling washing powder, we used to role play objection handling. So we would sit in a room and have to listen to every possible objection under the sun and come up with quick responses. And once you get the hang of the objection handling method, it's actually very easy. For example, let's start with an obvious one. You hear it a lot of times. People say, I can't afford it. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard that said to me. And I can tell you now that my conversion rate on people that have said that to me is far higher than the average, probably by at least 50%. People buy something they need or which they see value in. So it's not your job to decide whether someone can afford it. If you do a good enough job of selling and positioning your product or service and the benefits associated with it, then it becomes a no-brainer for them. And if you hear, I can't afford it and just accept it, then you've already lost. Because I've seen it happen countless times. Someone will say, I can't afford a $200 product. And the next day they're investing $5,000 in something different. So I'm not talking about being pushy, but I'm talking about the next thing, which is a very easy thing to do, follow up. You would have heard the expression, the money's in the list, but I can also tell you the money is in the follow up. So what do you do when someone says no, but you know they're a good fit for your business? You continue the relationship. You support them, you add value until they're ready. I have got so many clients from doing this by maintaining the follow-up and clients who've said no to me on a sub $50 product will then come back at a later stage and spend $2,000 with me. It really does work. I can guarantee you 100% that the follow-up really is worth doing. So you check in a month later, you see how they're doing. You send them something that you think might be useful or helpful. Selling. You know, if you've got someone on your list They've put their hand up because they want to hear from you. So you need to keep in touch with them. You need to communicate with them and you never assume that they've already seen something or read something. And that's why you can repurpose content. That's why you can send something to your list. You can then put it on your page, put it in your group. You can put the message out there multiple times because people don't always see things. The second thing is trust develops at different speeds. I, it can take anything from minutes to years. You know, I had someone say to me once, oh, I've been following you for the past three years. I just wanted to let you know, I've just bought your email um, sequence swipe file. That was $15 at the time. So that was cheers. Cheers for that. Thank you. Three years and $15. But then I've also had clients who have made a high ticket purchase from me in just 15 minutes. So that's why I say trust develops at different speeds for different people. You know, I had one client that uh, when I was working in the bank that used to say, would say no to me for four years. I'd speak to him once a week. I gave him value. And then one day he called me up and bam, 400 million of sales. I wasn't the cheapest offer around, but I had a strong connection and that made all the difference. And then remember, even if you think nobody's watching or listening to you, there nearly always is. Some of the silent lurkers will eventually throw money at you if you continue to provide value and nurture them. So the biggest thing with sales is to approach it with a positive mindset. Find a method of selling that's authentic and suits you. And don't forget that everything you do is selling. Every email you send, every Facebook post you make, you're selling yourself, you're selling your expertise. And then when the time is right, you're selling your product or service. When your pricing is right, then sales conversations are super simple. Then you start to invest heavily in marketing. You spend more time on social media because, you know, you've got a profitable business model. So in order to get more clients, you need to connect, engage, and sell to your target audience. Secret number three, I don't need to feel overwhelmed, fear, or burnout to get rapid growth. Let's quickly run through the stages of business, or ha- stages of business how you can recognize them, and what the priorities are for each stage, and then we'll dive into some specific strategies. Does that sound okay? So remember our ultimate business success system. We've got... The first stage, which is ignition. 
This is going from dream to idea. You're just getting started, you have a few sales, or you're yet to make your first sale. Then you move on to growth. Sales are increasing, but may not yet be consistent. You're trying to do many different things at once. You're ready to start bringing leads into your business consistently and putting in place processes for converting them to paying clients. And then you move on to scale. You have consistent sales, but you're ready to start growing that and freeing up some of your time by making strategic investments in people and resources. And then finally, innovation. You're at the top of your game now, and now you just need to focus on staying there. So based on the descriptions I've just given, what stage matches where you are right now? For most people that I speak to, it's ignition or growth. Then we move on to the pillars of success, which I want to share with you. These are the building blocks of a successful business. And I'm not going to talk in great depth about them today, but what's important is recognizing how as you move through the stages of business, different pillars will be more important. Now, the foundation to everything which you see at the bottom is mindset. In my 18 years of experience working with everyone from solopreneurs to multinational corporates, I have seen firsthand that the single biggest factor that determines success is mindset. I've seen people with no experience, no list, no website, and no money manage to build a six going on seven figure business, whilst I've seen leading experts in their fields with plenty of money and other resources behind them fail miserably. And that is down to mindset. Then we've got sales and marketing. This is your connect, engage, and sell framework that we've already discussed. This pillar is black and white. You're either making sales in your business or you're not, which is why fear plays such a big part because this pillar is the main focus in both ignition and growth. Then we've got systems and processes. This is all about putting in place automation and procedures that allow you to take a step back from wearing all the hats and doing all the things in your business. And this gives you room to think, plan, and strategize your way to the next level. Plus, it's the most likely time when you can start to have more free time rather than your business becoming all-consuming. Then we've got delivery and feedback. This is the way in which you deliver the product or service to the client, the way in which you collect feedback and the process by which you leverage the power of that feedback to drive further business. Happy customers mean you've got a growing business. And then finally, management. As you scale your business, you will use external people and resources and how you structure this and the clarity with which you can share your vision, expectations and culture is crucial to being able to have a business that is scalable beyond mid six figures. And then we move on to the success system matrix. This is the engine room of the business success system. So I'm just going to go through quickly and sort of pick out a few things from, from each of these areas. To so start with ignition, the important things here are taking action and idea validation, and that comes by making sales. The biggest obstacles in this area are fear, overwhelm, and stress. And a lot of people in this area waste a lot of time. You know, it's easy to waste time. People are either researching or trying to get things perfect, or you're wasting time reading the stories of other successes or other, what other people are doing, or you're wasting time following the so-called gurus. You know, at this stage, it's hard to go all in because you're not sure whether your idea takes off. And that's why so many businesses fail, because people give up too soon. And often people in this stage are too scared to invest, when in actual fact, investing is one of the quickest ways to kickstart your business. If you invest wisely in the coaching tools and systems that you need, you can get success a lot quicker. So you need to invest for success. And the biggest action you can do here is taking action. So my biggest single biggest piece of advice to people when starting out, along with ditching the overwhelm and a positive mindset, done is better than perfect. Until you get out there in amongst your ideal audience, you won't know what works. You know, I don't think you'll find anyone successful that has a business identical today to when they first started out, because the whole point of businesses is that they evolve over time. The fastest way to validate your idea is to make a sale, not spend time or money getting a perfect website, not spend hours posting beautiful photos and quotes on social media. Just get one sale, connect with one person, whether that's in person or online, and then start to build the relationships to understand the actions that people take. What you can learn from social interactions is worth its weight in gold. What made that person throw money at you and overcome any doubts they had about you or your product or service? You know, when I first started out, I would sell low ticket items up to about $50. And then often I would discount the price or even offer free spaces in return for valuable feedback. And in fact, two months ago, I ran my 10 days to 1K program for free for 180 people. And the feedback I had from that was invaluable. So you need to be asking questions like, why did you buy my products or service? What results are you looking for? What problem does it solve for you? And you can leverage it in so many ways. And the answers might surprise you. There is no other way to get this information. You won't get this information by spending days locked in your office scouring the internet for answers. 
And once you have your idea validated, you're off to the races. Your chances of failure are dramatically slashed and you're ready to move on to the next stage, which is growth. When you're making sales, but not consistently. Now in this stage, you can easily waste time trying to figure things out because you're a one man band. So for example, if you're not very tech, you know, tech minded, you can really struggle with that. You're trying to keep a lot of plates spinning at once and you're asking yourself, things like, am I doing the right thing? You know, here, the focus should be on sales and marketing and it's crucial to get this right. You need to learn to connect, engage and sell to your target audience more than anything else in the world. Remember our action, reaction, validation. So you've got your validation from the ignition phase. Now it's time to get the connect, engage and sell systems working for you. You need to be bringing in consistent leads into your business on autopilot. You need to be knowing that you can convert these leads into sales across the value chain. In other words, at all price points within your business. And this, you know, this stage, this growth stage is such an exciting phase of your business because sales are starting to increase. Your marketing starting to pay dividends in terms of connecting, engaging and converting. And, you know, it's, it's really is it's so, so exciting. But at this stage, your business is still super reliant on you. You're probably still doing everything. And it's really hard sometimes to see the wood for the trees, to see an end to the madness. Because I imagine that you've started your business to give you freedom. And yet you're probably finding yourself working longer hours than ever before. And it can be all consuming. So once you get to the point where you're making consistent sales and once it's working, you need to start putting in place the systems and processes that will enable you to grow easily and efficiently going forwards. And this enables you to move to the scale stage of development. Now, moving from growth to scale is the hardest jump to make because most people running a business are good at the delivery side of things or good at the sales or good at the marketing, but they don't have the ability to put in place the systems to be able to really scale their business. Now, I know for me, for example, you know, I, I knew and understood Facebook ads, but I just didn't have the time to dedicate to them. So I quickly outsourced that. But in order to be able to outsource things, you need to understand them. So that's why I say it's always best to do things yourself the first time around. And when you can understand it, you can then outsource it and you can manage that process a lot, a, a lot more efficiently. And it doesn't have to be business related outsourcing. You know, I'm lucky enough. I've got help around the house with cleaning, childcare, laundry, and that frees up my time to focus on growing my business. And then when you get to scale, you know, that's great. You've made it to that stage. You're no longer doing the repetitive tasks. Your brain power sort of freed up to focus on strategizing and planning. And then the most important thing in this phase is making sure your systems and processes are solid because you're becoming more of a manager here and you need to provide strong guidance and dire direction. And then innovation. You know, you've reached the top of the heap and now it's a case of staying there. And that's a whole nother story for another day. So let's talk about the exact five things and recap. Here are the focus points for each stage. So if you're in the ignition phase, you need to take action. You need to do idea validation. You need to be getting sales to make money. And you need to be starting to attract and engage with your audience. And you need to be delivering. You need to make your clients the happiest people in the world. Then you go on to the growth stage and it's sales and marketing. It's your value chain. It's your systemization. It's your list building and your community gauging. It's your authority building, your content creation, your marketing. You're choosing your one or two platforms to be really present on and to start building up some great content. And it's your sales funnels. And then it's your systems and processing. Then you move on to scale where you're cementing your authority, you're outsourcing, you're investing more, you're more, moving on to more marketing platforms and you're in complex funnels and segregation. And then there's innovation. So this is how the strategy framework looks. You do the strategy, you set up the systems, and then you hire the people who are good at the tactics. So here, what we've, here's what we've learned. We've learned how to get more consistent sales in your business. You've learned how to use Facebook to get more clients and what to focus on for quick success in your business. And it's really exciting, but an hour isn't that long, so I've only been able to scratch the surface. You know, imagine building your business to 100K or more. How would that change your life? It's pretty cool. And how would you like it if I could help you implement this? How would you like to work with me directly? And I could help you implement exactly what we've just talked about every step of the way. So I've got something to share with you if you're interested in. This is the Female on Fire Mastermind. This is the only way in which you can work with me. It's either mastermind or one-on-one -on -one work. How would it feel to have more time to enjoy life, to be able to travel or spend time with your family? How would it feel to have crazy amounts of income coming into your business with ease and flow? How would it feel to be, you know, kicking ass and being recognized as a go-to person in your niche? You know, consistently attract, convert and deliver dream clients who can't stop gushing about how amazing you are. 
Now, how would you feel to be hitting that elusive six-figure mark in your business on your way to far greater success of being able to, to magnify that once you get there? These are some of the results that you will get. You know, imagine being able to double your income in just two months. That's what I've done with one of my clients recently. She's added an additional $8,000 a month to her business in just two months, and that doubled her business. Imagine blasting through your income goals, but being ready to scale that to even greater success. So doing it with ease and with a system and a process in place. Imagine knowing how to attract, convert, and sell to your target audience so you have consistent sales coming into your business every month. Imagine having more time to enjoy life without business slowing down as a result. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you with the mastermind. This type of program is for the person who's struggling with overwhelm, who's struggling with fear, who's struggling with shiny object syndrome, a lack of time and no clear plan for growth. I'm telling you that you need this. This is how it works. It's a five month program. It has got weekly accountability, it's got business tracking and support, daily access to me, that's my eyes on your business, a private Facebook group, a bespoke business strategy that's right just for you, a unique system for attracting, engaging and selling to your target audience, pop-up training when you need it, mindset, funnels, sales, launching, guidance to help you analyze existing and develop new income streams. I'm not a big fan of programs because I don't think they are right for everyone because they don't take into account what stage of business you're at and exactly what you need to be focusing on. And that is why this mastermind is so powerful because it's a unique blend of group coaching, mastermind and one-on-one -on -one support. So my eyes on your business. You know, and for those of you who are watching this live, you will get a one-on-one -on -one session with me when you sign up in the next 30 minutes. So what you're going to get, you're going to get a full business review and bespoke business strategy just for you. So we can get you to exactly where you need to be taking some of the things that we've covered today, plus more mindset systems, list building, sales, marketing, you know, and my private clients will pay me a minimum of $1,500 for that. You'll get bi-weekly calls in, a, in an intimate group setting. So you'll get the chance to ask me questions and have my eyes on your business. That's a value of $997. You'll get a plan for client acquisition, conversion and delivery. Again, value $997. You'll get email or messenger access to me. The value is $1,497. Even if you only got this, then your investment would be worth it. And you'll get pop-up training as required. Value is $997. But that's not all. I am offering a special early bird price for the first five people that sign up. And luckily for you, if you're listening to this, then you'll be at the front of the queue. It's just going to be $299 a month. My coach told me this is a crazy price and she's not happy with me. So I'm not going to be offering this mastermind at this lower price again because of the value and because of the results I know it will get. And that's not all. I'm also going to offer you my mindset training with value of $297. Remember, mindset is the foundation and our pillars to success. The benefits of mindset. So you need to understand why mindset is so important. Why you need to change certain habits or behavior which are holding you back, which are sabotaging your success. You need to understand how your attitudes and experience influence you and understand the conscious versus subconscious mind and how to influence it. Another bonus I'm going to throw in there is my Facebook fire up that's worth $497. How to use Facebook groups, either yours or other people's, to grow your business. I'll share with you my best converting Facebook ads and posts. I'll show you how to leverage the power of Facebook Live to get more clients. And I'll tell you the exact posts that you need to be writing for your business. So these are all the things you're going to get, the review and the bespoke strategy, the bi-weekly calls, the client acquisition, conversion, delivery plan, the email and messenger access to me, the pop-up training as required, the early bird pricing, the mindset training, the Facebook fire-up formula. Total value of that is $7,000, over $7,000. But I wanted to ask you something. If all this package did was help you get consistent sales in your business, would it be worth $7,000? Yes, hell yes. If all this business did was to grow your list and in the knowledge that you know how to convert those leads into paying customers at all points of the value chain, would it be worth it? I think so too. I don't, you know, I don't know about you, but I would pay $7,000 for $10,000 of sales a month in a heartbeat. And if all this did was finally make you take the action that you've been putting off, would it be worth it? It's a five month program, but the knowledge and strategy will be with you forever but I'm not gonna charge you $7,000. You can join today, and it's just gonna cost $299 per month. Spaces are limited, but if you're interested, go to femaleonfire.com mastermind. Now, if one client was worth 
$299 to you. Would you pay me that much to set all this up for you? You know, spaces are really limited. My masterminds will need and they will get my full attention. It's going to be so intense, but it's going to be incredibly powerful and it will only work the small groups. You don't want to miss out on this. You deserve this. I'm also going to throw in my challenge toolkit. You've probably all seen, if not participated, a challenge. And there's a reason there's so many of them, is they do work. They're one of the most effective ways to grow your list, establish your authority, and sell more. But 90% of people seem to do challenges wrong. There is a very specific formula that needs to be followed to make sure that your challenge is successful. And you're talking about adding hundreds, if not thousands of people have done right. And we're talking mid five figure launches. So I'm going to share with you my challenge toolkit, which will have everything you need to do. It's a step-by-step -step framework. It's the exact emails you need to send out when. It's how to increase engagement. And most importantly, how to lead the challenge into a sale with a high conversion rate. And this is what I'm trying to do for you. I'm trying to save you a heap of time. You can't get time back. Money is easy because it's endless, but your time is not. So you could go out and learn all this on your own. The information's all out there, but the time you'll waste trying to find it, sifting through it, trying to determine what's relevant, what's not, and then testing it to see what works, that time won't ever come back. So getting back to what you're gonna get, all this now, add it up with all the bonuses, it's worth over $8,000. But you can get started now, $299 a month. Spaces are limited. So I want to ask you a question. You know, a lot of you have probably been on these types of workshops before and you get all fired up and you get all excited and you get inspired, but what happens the next day? For most of you, probably nothing, which is really sad because I've given you the exact system you need to scale your business to six figures and beyond. So you're going to go back to nap tomorrow and do nothing. And here's why. Because old habits are hard to break. The only way you're going to be successful is if we can figure a way to break the habits you have now. And the way you can break the habits is by investing in this mastermind program. I love action takers. You know, I can help you. I can give you all the tools you need to grow your business to hit those income goals so that you can be successful. But if you don't, you'll be back in the same habits. Everything we've covered today would have been useless. So take a chance you know check this out and if it does even half of what i've talked about it will pay for itself multiple times over that is my promise to you check it out femaleonfire.com slash mastermind and what i want to say to you is you know i talked about this at the beginning the one thing i want you to think about what is the one thing that you're going to take away from today and turn it into an action step that was my goal i want everyone to take one thing away take it turn it into an action step and implement it and you have two choices. Firstly, you can do nothing. You can stay stuck. You can stay frustrated. You can stay overwhelmed in your business and without a clear plan of how to grow and scale. That's fine. But I'm guessing you're tired of that. I'm guessing that's why you're here today. You want to fix this problem. You started your business because you had a dream. Let's make that happen. I'm with you every step of the way. You'll have my full support and guidance. This is my zone of genius. You can do it. I know you can. You know. I want to help you right now. Are you ready to transform your business and life and never look back? You know, you can get started now. Check it out, femaleonfire.com slash mastermind. If you've got any questions, you can send them to me, hannah at femaleonfire.com, or you can message me via Facebook. But I want to say to you, you know, you can do it. I believe in you. Just got to believe in yourself. And you've just got to take the action. I hopefully see you on the Mastermind program and I'm prepared to make your business explode. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye. So the reason I'm joining Hannah's um, Mastermind group is to get the nuts and bolts to help me to take my business to the next level. Um, straight away I was like wow who is this lady that was really clear that was really good to understand and it solves a massive problem that I've been having and didn't think it'd even be solvable. The evening for me is knowing that we'll have direct access to Hannah. So if you want to grow your business um, if you just want somebody that you can connect with that can help you then I would really 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 recommend Hannah. Every time I've worked with you, whether that's with one of your freebies or one of the pay programs, my business has taken such leaps and bounds um, in, at such a speed that I wasn't really expecting. If you want to grow your business, then um, I 
highly recommend working with Hannah, especially on the Mastermind group. I just couldn't believe how friendly she was and how she just replied to all my messages. There was no kind of, you know, you can send me one email a month kind of thing. It was just, yep, yeah, I want to help you, I want to help you grow your business. I felt that she completely got me. Um, I just really connected with her. And just taking a minute to say how super excited I am to be taking part in the Female on Fire Mastermind. So I've been working with her for quite a few months now and she's just really helped me grow my business. Um, I set myself some goals at the start and thanks to Hannah I completely met them easily within about two months and I thought it was going to take me about six months. She helped me overcome some of my fears posting on Facebook and doing Facebook live videos. I just love knowing that she's there in the background, always willing to help me and is going to answer any question I have. Um, I feel she's really, really approachable. So I'm super, super excited to really um, get focused in on what I need to do to achieve the sort of end goal that I'm aiming for. The reason I've chosen to do that with Hannah is because she is so knowledgeable about running businesses but growing businesses as well. I've just signed up to Hannah's mastermind group. I am so excited, I really can't wait to get started. It's a small intimate group um, and just the actual agenda and all the things that are covered on it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, an intimate program with like-minded businesswomen and entrepreneurs who have um, the same goals and aspirations working together. So um, I would suggest jump on board and hopefully I will see you there.